So it seems like new phones are coming out every few months. It's great for us because we get to play with new toys, but sometimes a bummer for you, buy a new phone and then like a week later, it seems like you got an upgrade. Well, HTC is back with their latest phone. This is the Bolt and it's exclusive to Sprint and it's kind of a follow up to their flagship HTC 10 with some questionable choices made, but also some nice features that you might want that the 10 is lacking. So let's go ahead and take a look at the phone and let me know what you guys think. So before I jump into specs, let's talk about design. First, it's iconic HTC, not just because it's got the HTC logo. We can look at this phone and be cover that up and be like, this is clearly HTC. It's got that industrial look and industrial feel to it. And the build quality looks to be really awesome. They did some different things with the design here. There's a lot more angles than we've had on previous devices, even around the corners. Uh, it's a series of different angles that sort of make it go all the way around. Where companies are going for that more smooth look like we saw with Samsung, HTC is going a different direction. I think it works here as well. This is a nice looking phone. It's a nice feeling phone as well. Uh, we've got it here in, in the black color, but there's a Glacier Silver uh, available as well in case that's your fancy. Uh, all of this nice looking phone is not going to come cheap. Uh, it's gonna set you back 25 bucks per month for two years for a whopping out of the door total of almost $600. So if you're doing your math at home, you might know the HTC 10 is on sale for $549. So $50 more, you figure you get $50 more in the spec department. And if that $50 more in the spec department means you want some sort of water resistance, then this is probably a good phone for you to pick up because it is rocking IP57, whereas HTC 10 doesn't have, have anything. But if you care more about raw specs, then you are going to be disappointed, especially for your extra $50. On the screen, you're looking at a QHD screen, it's 5.5 inches. Uh, initial impressions here, it looks to be on par with other QHD screens. It's not gonna stand out from the pack as one of the best screens out there, but if you want the extra resolution, especially for things like virtual reality, uh, you're gonna have that here with the HTC Bolt. So here's where things get a bit questionable uh, for me. It's rocking a Snapdragon 810. Now it's a new modified version of the 810, but it's still the 810. The 810 that's been in phones for a little over 12 months now if memory serves me properly. So it's a bit tough to justify in that Snapdragon 810 is paired with three gigs of RAM, which is a bit under what we're seeing now flagship phones have. And I'm comparing this to a flagship phone because they're charging flagship prices for it. So that's sort of my metric for what I consider. Really, if anything $550 and higher, I consider a flagship. And this one, again, pushing $600. 32 gigs of storage are on board. You do have an expandable storage slot for micro SD cards. Uh, where HTC might have been deficient on the processor side, they really tried to push things forward on the software side. This is shipping out of the box with Android 7.0 Nougat with HTC's own skin sitting on top. And I don't know if it's HTC or Sprint thing, but there is a lot of bloatware on this phone. It extends all the way to the wallpaper it's shipping with. There's, there's a lot of apps you're gonna wanna put in a folder. HTC has been stepping up their camera game, especially starting with the HTC 10, and that continues here with the Bolt. They have a 60 megapixel sensor on the back with f2.0 aperture, paired with an 8 megapixel selfie camera on the front. Rather than the other things we like to see, boom sound, some of the best speakers going, and USB Type-C for charging and syncing on the bottom. So it appears to be a mixed bag for the Bolt. I love the design. Things like the power and lock button have a nice texture to it. The fingerprint reader seems to work really well. The industrial feel seems solid, but questionably outdated specs are kind of hard to look past. Now I get it's not always about the processor, and that is certainly very true. Uh, Android's really been streamlined the past few years, especially with 7.0, where it becomes less dependent on having raw power and a ton of RAM to run smoothly. But when you're charging 600 bucks, as a consumer, you kind of want to feel like you're getting $600 worth of phone. And I'm not sure that you're getting that here with the HTC Bolt. There's a lot of options. Uh, for that same price point from Android uh, and of course from Apple as well. So whether or not you want the bolts, you're gonna come down to design, water resistance, and carrier. If you're a Sprint, you like HTC, and you want waterproofing, then get the bolt, you're gonna love it. If you're with Sprint and maybe want the best phone for your dollar, look at the whole portfolio and decide for yourself.